In this video, we'll go over an example of reading comma-separated values from a file into an array of structs using C. So here we have a file with comma-separated values in it, where each line in this file represents a record. And we're going to say that these are records for students, where this here is the type of student, this here is the name of the student, this here is the age of the student, and this here is the student's average. And these values are separated by commas. So on a line, each of the values, each of the fields for a record are separated by commas. And this type of data we call CSV data. And CSV files are a very common way of representing data. Often they're exported from programs like Excel or from databases. First, we'll make a struct type to actually represent each student record. So we'll say here, typedef struct, and we'll call it student. Then we'll put in the different members. So car type for the type of the student, car name, 50, for the name of the student, int age for the age of the student, and double average for the student's average. So we're assuming that this first value here is going to be a single character. We're assuming that names are not going to be longer than 49 characters, given that we do need one additional character for the null terminator to actually terminate the string. And then we have an int for age and then a double for the average. Next, we'll actually open up the file. So we'll need a file pointer variable to do that. We'll say file star file to create that. We'll open the file with fopen. So we'll say file is equal to fopen, file.txt, and then r for the mode. So fopen is going to return a file pointer. We're going to store that into file. It's going to open file.txt. And this r mode means that we're going to open the file for reading. So we're going to read content from the file. If fopen can't open the file, it's going to return null. So we'll check for that. If file is equal to null, that means something's gone wrong opening the file. And so we'll print out an error message and we'll exit with an error status. So we'll say error opening file with a new line and then we'll return one. We're going to return one instead of returning zero because returning one is a signal to the shell, to the terminal, that something's gone wrong in the execution of a program. Next, we'll want to read the content from the file and store it into an array of structs. So to create the array of structs, we'll say student, students, 100. So we can store up to 100 student records from the file into that array. Next, we'll make a loop to go through and read each line of the file and store the record into this student's array. So we'll say int read is equal to zero. We'll use read to store the number of values that were read in successfully from each line of the file so that we can verify that each line was read in successfully. We'll also create a variable called records and we'll initialize it to zero. And records is gonna keep track of the number of records we've read in from the file. Now we can make the loop. We'll say do and then while. So we're gonna have a do while loop. And we're gonna to continue to read from the file so long as we haven't reached the end of the file. So, so long as not feof file is true. So feof is gonna return true once we've reached the end of this file here. So not feof means continue so long as we haven't reached the end of the file. We'll use fscanf to actually read in each line of the file. fscanf returns the number of values that it was able to read in successfully. So we'll store that return value into read so we can verify it later. So here we'll say read is equal to fscanf file. We're gonna read in the lines like this. We'll say here percent %c comma. So what this means is read in a single character and then a comma. Now the name part of the record is the trickiest part. Here we wanna read in a string up to 49 characters in length, and we wanna stop once we reach the first comma. So what I'll say here is percent %49, and then inside of square brackets, we'll have the caret symbol followed by comma. So what this means here is read 
up to 49 characters, but stop matching at the first comma. So match up to 49 characters, but stop at the first comma. Then we'll have a comma, then we'll have percent %d for an integer, and then percent %lf for a double value, and then a new line. And here we'll have and students records dot type followed by students records dot name and then and students records dot age and then and students records dot average. So records is keeping track of how many records we've read in from the file. We're also going to use it to keep track of the current position in this array where we're going to store the current record that we're reading in. We have this and here because we pass in the memory address in the case of type, age, and average. In the case of name, we also pass in the memory address, but we don't need and because name is an array. And when we use an array like this as an argument to a function, it decays to a pointer. And the memory address for name is what's gonna be passed in here. Now, fscanf is gonna return how many values it was able to read in successfully, and that should be four. So we store that into read, and we'll check to see if read is four. So if read is four, that means everything's okay. And we're gonna increment records to recognize that another record has been read in successfully. So if read doesn't equal four, there's potentially a formatting problem with the file, or at least this line in the file, because we couldn't read in all four values from that line. The exception to this would be once we've reached the end of the file. So if read doesn't equal four, and it's not the case that we've reached the end of the file, then we have a potential formatting issue. So we'll say here, printf, file, format, incorrect, followed by a new line. And then again, we're going to return one as a signal to the shell, to the terminal, that something's gone wrong in the execution of our program. And again, the check here is basically, if we couldn't read in four values, and it's not the end of the file yet, there's potentially a formatting issue. And so we output an error message to let the user know, and we exit with an error status. Next, we'll check to see if there was an error reading the file using f error. So if f error file is true, that means there was some kind of error reading the file. And again, we'll exit with an error status and message. So we'll say printf error reading file backslash n, and again, return one as an error signal. So this should be it. That should actually read all the data from the file into our array of structs. To verify that we've done it successfully, we should actually print out that data. So here, now that we're done with the file, we'll say fclose file. Then we'll make a loop to go through and output the array of structs. First, we'll print out the number of records read. So we'll say printf backslash n percent d records read, followed by a couple new lines. And then for that percent %d, we'll provide records. So we'll say like three records read. The loop will look like this. We'll say four int i is equal to zero. i is less than records because records is the number of records read, i plus plus. And we'll print out each record. We'll say printf percent %c for the type of the student, percent %s for the name, percent %d for the age, and percent %2f for the average, and then backslash n. Then we'll output each student's values. So we'll say students at index i dot type for the student's type, students at index i dot name for the student's name, and students at index i dot age for the student's age, and students at index i dot average for the student's average. And when we're all done printing the records, we'll just print out one more new line. We'll say printf backslash n. And we'll save this, and that should be it. So we'll compile the program. 
and then we'll run it. And we get three records read, and we get exactly that data from the file in our output. So we have successfully read in these records from the file and stored them into our array of structs. We can also detect things like errors in our file. So for example, let's open the file and let's mess up the formatting here. Let's delete Serena's age. So there's only three values on this line of the file now. So if we save this and we check out our file, now this one line here is essentially broken because it's missing an age. Let's try to run our program now. It says file format incorrect. So we can recognize that and report that error to the user as well. So this is how we can read CSV data from a file into an array of structs using C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.